So uh, the next uh, ecosystem review is India. And uh, we have Rashma Sohoni, the co-founder and partner at Seedcamp. Europe. Europe. Not India? No. Europe, sorry. <laughs> I'm just Indian, that, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> no music, oh, darn. Um, so I'm thrilled to, thrilled to be here representing Europe. Um, and you know, hopefully I think in the first part of the, the presentation, I'll talk a little bit about us and obviously it's some cheap marketing stunt, but, um, but I think a lot of how we've built Europe is very relevant to how the ecosystem in MENA starts to, starts to rise. So hopefully some of those learnings um, will be imparted over to you guys. And then the second half, I'll certainly talk about what's, um, what's happening to a greater detail in, or to a greater depth in Europe. Um, so what is, what is SeedCamp? We are aiming to be the founder's first round, of first round fund of choice all across Europe. Um, what, is, you know, what does that mean? We invest smart capital into pre-seed and seed stage companies. So our check sizes range anywhere from 75,000 to 200,000 euros, dollars, um, however you want to look at it. And we invest through a lifelong platform around learning, capital, and network. So we're not trying to be angel investors. We're not trying to be VC investors. There's loads of angel and VC investors spread all across Europe. A lot of US money, Chinese money is coming into Europe as well. But what's, uh, what's lacking in a huge way across Europe is a very platform-oriented approach. So this very support-oriented um, approach that 500 Startups has, you know, Andreessen has around, um, around imparting learning, around really connecting networks and, and, and getting a lot of capital into these companies. So that's what we really focus on. Um, we are literally probably the most active pre-seed and seed investor across Europe. So we see everything across, um, you know, we think of the region as everything from Ireland up to Finland, down to sort of Spain and, and Lisbon, all the way out to, uh, out to Israel, Turkey, Jordan, and, and so forth. So, you know, being here is really interesting this weekend because MENA is literally kind of, you know, on the edge of, of our kind of core region. So, uh, you know, as, as I learn about this market, I'm excited about the global opportunities coming out of MENA that, that we would be able to back and, and support as well. So in terms of, you know, what do we invest in? We're extremely horizontal. So across all sectors, um, TransferWise is probably our most well-known well -known company globally. They've been funded most recently by Andreessen, and uh, they're a pretty global, uh, pretty global player in terms of peer-to-peer -peer currency transfers. So they're, uh, you know, they're valued, well, roughly valued at more than a billion now. So, and that's been in just about three, four years, which is pretty staggering. Um, I know this market cares a lot about property. So Property Partner is a fascinating company. It's probably one of the most complex businesses out there. Um, you know, London is a massive center of gravity for, for property tech. And I think for those of you interested in, um, in crowdfunding and in, in how that can impact property, it's a super interesting business. So it's a buy-to-let concept, uh, buy concept around residential property and getting crowdfunding uh, in, into those properties. So getting people on the property ladders and get, getting them invested into, into residential properties. So they recently actually got an, an investor from China invested in the business now and trying to unlock capital from China that, that floods in into London anyways in the property space, but you know, enabling that to happen at a, at a more mass market level. So fish brain and the fishing community, I mean, we, we have sort of, again, a very, very sort of horizontal base of, of companies. Um, as I mentioned, we want to be the investor of choice, and, and you know, we are all across Europe, but rest of the world as well. So we have investments in Turkey, Jordan, Israel, and, uh, and even Hong Kong in the US. And they, and they happened because we have such very close networks in those, in those particular geographies. And again, we hope to do much more in, in hopefully the MENA region as, as well. Um, we have about 200 companies we've backed, roughly 40 have shut down. So it's about a death rate of 20%. I would say you know it should be more. I think we have a few companies that are uh, that are profitable and earning revenue, but they're not kind of the fast growth stars that that a typical venture investor likes to see, um, and and have had several acquisitions as well where we've been returning money to our investors. 
So I won't belabor this except to say we've, uh, we've been able to get our companies funded by some of the best investors globally and also to be able to see some really interesting exits as well. Um, so our investment strategy, as I said, pre-seed 75,000 euros for, for roughly a, a fixed percent equity. Our seed stage, we're very open. And that's where I think if we're seeing some things out of MENA, that could be quite interesting. We like rounds of half a million to two million, and we're a 200K check into those rounds. So if you have companies raising in that realm, definitely let us know. And, and, and going after a global, uh, global um, customer base, please let us know. And then in terms of our follow-on strategy, so I think if you guys are considering investing in, in funds, um, you know, we've taken a more life cycle approach, starting with pre-seed and, and adding seed to that. And then we also follow on, because I think obviously it's pretty critical to retain your, your equity as much as you can through the life cycle of the business. So we're pretty ruthless in, in assessing what level of follow-ons we do. And so we only follow on in about 25% of our businesses. Um, so as you're building an ecosystem here, I think, you know, what, what Europe, we were the first ones in Europe about eight years ago. So it's, you know, as we look back over the last decade, our unique approach, which we kicked off at that point, and, and it's really kind of coming into its stride now, um, you know, very relevant here, which is you need to offer a lot of support. And so what we've done is used a three-pronged system around uh, a very global network, a continuous learning process. So we have our companies stay with us from pre-seed to IPO or, or M&A, and they're constantly learning with, with us and from our uh, network of mentors and advisors. And then lastly, access to smart capital. So one of the things that, that we think is extremely valuable to, to entrepreneurs is the, the ability to choose where to receive your capital. So having an in investor base that's global means our, our companies can choose from capital depending on what their, you know, what their industry is, what their specific opportunity is. And it's not just capital that's available because they happen to be in a certain location. Um, so, so network, just a, a few pictures on here for network capital and learning is, um, you know, we're, we're unique in our LP base and I'll get into that with a, a slide later on as well. So we're probably unique globally in the sense that the entire ecosystem came together to help us start eight years ago. So you have a lot of VCs who compete with, with, with each other, corporates, angels, and so forth. And for kind of one moment in time, eight years ago, they really banded together. And so um, I'll show you a slide with our LPs, but it's some of the best VCs all across Europe, some of the best angels, family offices, corporates, fund of funds, and so forth. So I think, again, in terms of building up MENA, I would highly encourage the region, kind of the participants of the region, to come together. And, and rather than try to compete, because it's such early days and you're, you're kind of kicking things off, um, really encourage you to co come together and, and potentially back a, back a fund or, or some groups of people that are, you know, that are doing things to support the ecosystem. Um, we focus a lot on quality over quantity. So our, you know, our network, again, spreading the globe, um, you know, folks from Betfair, Spotify, Skyscanner, um, again, global investors, USV in, in New York, Andreessen, as I mentioned, Point Nine out of Germany, Index out of California and, and London. So we really spread our, um, you know, spread our network far and wide. Learning, we, again, focusing on quality, we try to get the best mentors, the best ad advisors on the operating side who can really help our companies think through how do you get to product market fit? How do you get early traction? How do you scale that traction into growth? So um, we, we reach out across our network and to, to really kind of find, entre find entrepreneurs and operators who can help our businesses think through about their challenges as they grow. And then in terms of capital, um, our companies have raised roughly about, I would say 400 million. Just this quarter, our companies have raised about 40, 40 to $50 million just this quarter. So it's been staggering. And I think, again, if you take a long-term view on accelerating ecosystems, you see, the, you, know, you see a huge benefit over time. And so each quarter, the pace of investment in our companies is, you know, is, is accelerating far beyond our expectations. So again, some of the best investors uh, globally, over 500 unique investors into our companies. Um, and again, they come from, they come from all, over the, all over the world. Um, as I mentioned, so just these are some of our LPs in, in the fund. 
you know, if you look at these names, they've invested in pretty much probably all the unicorns coming out of out of Europe, out of London specifically, specifically, and then broader um, broader over the globe as well. So those are some of the corporates. Um, so now getting into the you know what's happening in the European ecosystem. So I would say the European ecosystem was was a baby, uh, very you know newborn sort of eight years ago, uh, and it's definitely definitely kind of a, a toddler to a child now, right? It's a it's an accelerating and and um, growing European ecosystem. What's been helping accelerate it? So it's really across all the sets of tools that you can imagine. So. Europe has had some pretty incredible universities. I think you hear about kind of, you know, engineers and mathematicians in, in Russia. Um, UCL, particularly in, in London, has spawned a great number of technologies which haven't always been commercialized. They've been commercialized in the US. And so I think Europe is changing a lot. UK is changing a lot in terms of enabling that, uh, enabling that academia to become much more commercialized. So a huge range of universities we've backed Roughly, I think 10, 15% of our portfolio comes from INSEAD and LBS. I'm, I'm an INSEAD alum myself, so obviously have a little bit of a bias there. But, uh, and you know, Google put us, put it, one of its offices in Zurich, because again, that a university there spawns a great number of engineers, which, which have been sucked into Google, right? And now they're leaving and starting their own companies. So universities have been fundamental, obviously events as well. Um, I mean, I think if you look through, you know, look at a calendar between September and December, and generally between February and May, you're just, it, it, you're inundated by events across Europe. And they're incredible events touching all the kind of key ecosystems. So, um, you know, slush in, in Finland with, with sort of the gaming environment in Finland and Sweden and, and Norway, really a lot of pretty incredible companies go over there. Pioneers in, in Austria, Web Summit, which is just a phenomenon on its own, uh, now moving to Lisbon from, from Dublin, TechCrunch Disrupt, which we, which we all know about. And then accelerators. So, you know, I was, uh, Omar's slides were really interesting to, I mean, we've grown from that level of couple of angels here, a couple of funds here, into literally hundreds of accelerators across Europe. It's just staggering how much support there is. Um, and government incentives and so forth. And then talent. I would say that's the number one thing that has helped Europe grow from a baby into a child is talent. So you finally have incredible leaders around product growth marketing that are emerging out of Europe itself, which means we don't have to go constantly out to the US, to San Francisco, to New York, to try to hunt for that kind of talent to support our companies. There's homegrown and incredibly valuable talent. So I think, you know, in terms of what you guys are doing in MENA, um, I think identifying that talent who can really talk about, you know, as Sitar earlier talked about user experience and design and how important that is, if, you know, those people that, could, that really understand product and, and growth and, and marketing are just critical to building, building those huge, um, huge future businesses. So also accelerating the ecosystem are the angels, VCs. Um, so you know, Germany, UK, Israel ranked in, in the top top ten markets um, that have the that have the greatest number of sort of v, you know VC investments. So huge sort of number of hotbeds all across Europe that are that have um, that have a lot of funds to invest. And then finally, exits. So Europe has been drastically lacking in exits, and that's finally starting to change. And these are the um, you know, multi-billion dollar exits like king.com, and then the hundreds of million pounds and dollars worth of exits. And what's happening with these exits, what's interesting is, take deep mind, um, these are artificial intelligence um, related founders, and they basically had the choice to move out to the valley or stay in London, and they they actually chose to stay in London and convinced Google to acquire them and let them stay in, in London because they felt that that's where the greatest minds that they could recruit around AI were. So that's the amazing thing about some of these exits is that talent isn't just leaving, it's, you know, it's, staying, it's staying home and, and helping. And, and the founders of DeepMind are now very active angel investors as well. And then some extremely smart government incentives. I would say, you know, that's one of the other key enablers in Europe is government. So rather than um, rather than you know not harming, which is the least that they could do, they've actually gone a huge way to to helping to helping the startup ecosystem. 
So as I just mentioned, you know, operator angels, I would say these, you know, these eight, 10, and now growing number 15, 20 people have single-handedly had a massive impact on the, the unicorns to come and, and building, you know, building their own unicorns and investing in unicorns. So um, Shaq of Spotify, Edward Ray, particularly of Betfair, Tavit of Skype, who, who then built TransferWise and, and came through Seedcamp, Barry of Skyscanner and, and so forth. Um, as I mentioned, government incentives. So I, I would say if you're lucky enough to start your company in, in London, France, or Germany, you've got huge amounts of government support. Everything from SEIS and EIS, which has flooded the market with money. I mean, literally, it's comparable to San Francisco now in London. You, you fall out of bed and you hit an angel or you hit someone who's wanting to invest um, 150K or 200. It's gotten so easy to raise money in, in Europe. And you would certainly not hear me say that, uh, you know, eight years ago or even three, four years ago. R&D tax credits, um, visas for entrepreneurs and, and so forth. So what's happened? We've, you know, we've come a long way. Um, over 40 unicorns and climbing come produced in Europe. We've, uh, the, the time to reach kind of that billion dollar, star, billion dollar status has diminished significantly. Um, and, you know, just loads of, loads of money being raised. So where, where are the things happening? I mean, I would say, you know, for sure, London is on hyperdrive. It is the absolute gravita you know, center of gravity. And it's got this massive gravitational pull all across Europe um, and, and founders and talent just, and money just flooding in. So it's definitely the center of capital for Europe. If whether you're in Poland or, or Finland or Spain or, or wherever, you know, startups are, uh, are um, flooding into, into London to, to try to raise capital and get, get attention in the London market. Um, and it, you know, it is an incredibly powerful city. So it's got the center of, it's a huge prop, property market. It's a huge fin, uh, finance market. It's got um, entertainment, media. I mean, all the industries you can think of are all in London. So if you, if you combine San Francisco, LA, DC, Philadelphia, Boston, Austin, Chicago, it's all in London, which makes it an incredible place to be. Clearly, I'm biased as well. Um, so just a little bit more, you know, again, tons of, tons of accelerators, VCs, a lot of US money when it comes in, it comes into London first because it just got such, you know, close cultural, cultural relationships to the US as well, right? So it's a lot more kind of easy, easy place to, uh, place to start investing into Europe. So FinTech, I mean, somebody talked about this. I would say compared to any geography in the world, London is absolutely the best place to start up a fin FinTech business, way better than New York, um, I would say. Because the government, I mean, is putting in a lot of both incentives and really kind of um, really impacting the kind of regulations and, and so forth that will hinder a startup from being able to be formed. So it helps, you know, top down, it, it's certainly helping. And then there's a, t a ton of money coming into, um, into these businesses and a, a whole load of talent. So London having been the center of finance globally has helped a lot. There's a lot of city talent and then tech talent that's just mashing up and, and forming a lot of these startups. So if you're gonna start a, a FinTech business, you, you got to start up, you've got to start up in London. Um, E-commerce and marketplaces, again, certainly very extremely active, and that's been accelerating over the over the last couple of years. It's happening in um, in Germany as well, and these are just some of the, you know, these are some of the my slides got a little mis mixed up, but these are some of the fintech companies we have. We're probably the largest property tech investor in Europe right now. So we have about 15 plus property investments, 15, 20 plus fintech companies we've invested in. Um, and you know, across the kind of value chain of, of those sectors. Oop. There we go. So that was my... so. E-commerce and marketplaces, as I mentioned, um, like the likes of Deliveroo, uh, which I think just raised 100 million to expand globally. And instead of looking to the US, they're looking into regions like India and here and, and more of Asia as well. So it's interesting to see how European companies are also looking eastward versus, uh, versus westward. 
These are some of our companies within the within the e-commerce marketplace. Security, so you know, huge interest in in the UK in in backing security companies. Again, a lot more money going into security companies as as well, um, be, because I think. You know, Israel is right in the region as well. Obviously, we see a lot of talent coming out of Israel. We're 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 back. We're part of that backing some of that talent. Um, so we backed a couple of companies. One Intelement out of Spain, Symmetria out of out of Israel. So a lot of that talent is coming into Europe and and the U.S. So we've been you know it's been really interesting to see uh, Europe was completely sort of not on the radar of Israeli startups, and we're starting to see those companies, whether in fintech or security marketplaces, um, come, you know, come, into, come into Europe, use UK as a launching pad. So I realize I'm out of time, so I will just quickly wrap up just a couple more slides. So SaaS enterprise is, is big. Um, you know, everything from medical tech, agriculture, logistics, educational technology, again, very big sectors for innovation and disruption in Europe and attracting a lot of support and, and funding as well. Um, one thought I wanna leave you guys on is, rather than unicorn hunting, we're platform hunting. So what's lacking in Europe is you still don't have a platform business. And this is a huge, you know, huge gap for where uh, where Europe is today and what it should be. So we don't have the Apples and Amazons and Googles and, and Facebook. And so I think if, as the MENA region as well, if you're thinking about how does, you know, how does that region really kind of grow up and, and become a mature adult as such, you, you need a platform business. You need that kind of center of a node that all other businesses built around. And until Europe has that, we're always going to be an adolescent, right? So it's something we focus a lot on, on is really platform hunting. So last but not least, a little bit of marketing. Um, we're gonna be raising our fund four next year. So if anybody in the room wants to talk to me about that, we have investors all across the globe from China, Russia, you know, UK, Europe, and, and, and US. So thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter, Seatcamp, or I'm R. Sohoni on, on Twitter, and look forward to talking to you guys afterwards. Thank you. Um,